starting at 6 p.m. But yesterday they had the big St. Patrick's Day parade in an area called the Irish Channel. Uh, there's an area between Magazine Street and the river that was settled by the Irish back in the 1850s. And they still call it the Irish Channel. And that's where they had the big St. Patrick's Day parade yesterday. And today at noon in the suburbs, they have a St. Patrick's Day parade. And then tonight in the French Quarter, there's one that starts around 6 p.m. But we celebrate everything down here. Every time there's a holiday in the event of town, we have a big parade for it. <coughs> we just celebrated our Mardi Gras last week. It was on March 5th. The Mardi Gras is our biggest celebration. It's usually sometime in February. It all depends on when Easter is on the calendar as to when Mardi Gras is. Last year was February 13th, but this year it was kind of late. It was March 5th. But the Mardi Gras is about two weeks long. We have parades every night for about two weeks. And the last big day is Mardi Gras Day, which is called Fat Tuesday. But uh, we celebrate every time, uh, like Christmas, Easter, Halloween, every holiday, there's a parade. Now, right now we're on Canal Street. This is our main street. It starts at the river, which is a couple miles ahead of us. And ends, uh, it's about seven miles long. It's one of the widest main thoroughfares in the United States. It measures 171 feet across. And notice the streetcar here on the left. We have about four different streetcar lines in the city. But the streetcars are part of our public transportation. It costs $1.25 to ride the streetcar. It's only 40 cents for senior citizens over 55. But most of the locals use the streetcar to come back and forth to work and school every day. It's all part of our public transportation. Now, a lot of people ask about the population of New Orleans, but since Hurricane Katrina, that was 13 and a half years ago, uh, we're still missing about 50,000 people that never came back to rebuild. Before the hurricane, the population of New Orleans, the city itself, was about 500,000, and now it's right at around 450,000. That's just the city itself. But if you take combined all the suburbs, the whole metropolitan area right now is about a million people but louisiana is not a very big state the total population of the whole state is a little under six million we have a few big cities like new orleans baton rouge and lafayette but we have a lot of small towns throughout louisiana and our state capital is in baton rouge from new orleans to baton rouge along the highway it's about 80 miles but if you get on the mississippi river here and go up to Baton Rouge. It's about 145 miles by way of the river. And the Mississippi River runs right through our state capital, just like it does here in New Orleans. Now on the tour today, we're gonna make uh, a few stops. Uh, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna stop at one of our cemeteries later on. I'm gonna give you a brief history of this, the way we bury here. We have to bury above the ground here because most of New Orleans is below sea level. We have 41 cemeteries, and a lot of people that come here want to see the cemeteries because it's, it's so different than most places. They, where we, we bury above the ground and we use the same tombs over and over again. So we're gonna make a brief stop in one of our cemeteries. And we're gonna make a stop uh, during the, around the middle of the tour for a rest stop, probably in City Park. So we can get out, stretch a little bit, and get a refreshment and use the restroom. And then there's another stop we're gonna make along the London Avenue Canal is a Katrina exhibit. There was a lady, lady that had a house along the canal and when the, uh, the flooding came in, it washed her house two blocks down the street. And instead of rebuilding on that same property, she built a Katrina exhibit mm. where they have pictures of what the city looked like during the storm and captions telling you about exactly what happened here during and after Hurricane Katrina. And we should be finishing up around 12. Are y'all coming back to this same place? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, right now uh, we're facing the Mississippi River. But here in New Orleans, the city itself has water on both sides. The Mississippi River is our southern boundary, and Lake Pontchartrain is our northern boundary. So we have water on both sides of us. And we're going to see both those bodies of water today. We're going to see the Mississippi River. And then later on, we're going to see Lake Pontchartrain. That's where most of the water came from that flooded New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. It 
came from Lake Pontchartrain because the lake is connected to the Gulf of Mexico. And right now we're facing the Mississippi River. And anytime you're facing the river, like we're doing now, you're facing due south. Now, although the Mississippi runs north and south, in the New Orleans area, it's running east and west on its way south. So whenever you're facing the river, you're facing due south. And also directly ahead of us is the Gulf of Mexico. From here to the Gulf of Mexico in a straight line is about 60 miles. But if you get on the Mississippi River here, go down to the Gulf of Mexico, it's about 110 miles by way of the river. In fact, we have a cruise ship terminal here in New Orleans. And when the cruise ship leaves here to go down to the Gulf of Mexico, it takes about eight hours because of all the turns in the river. So y'all gonna be uh, kind of uh, redoing some property, uh, rebuilding mm -hmm. some of the homes. Yeah, we've had volunteer groups from all over the world coming in since Hurricane Katrina. I think your group has been here for a few times. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you ever taken this tour yourself? We've not taken this tour, no. We've, we've yeah. gone with a different company every year. So I've oh. seen three Hurricane Katrina tours. Oh, wow. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot to see still, you know. We have some areas that still need some work, like probably the area y'all be working in. But most of the city's been rebuilt, but it's been real, re rebuilt a little different. A lot of homes are being raised up now since the storm, but it's not a city ordinance. The insurance companies are requiring you to raise your house in order to get flood insurance, mm -hmm. which is very hard to get now and very expensive. So you can see in some of those neighborhoods we drive through today where a lot of the homes are raised up now, but none of those homes were raised up before Katrina. The all, all been since the hurricane. Let's get around this bus. Now here, uh, this is Canal Street and everything to the left is considered the French Quarter. The French Quarter is the oldest part of the city. It was founded by the French in 1718. So we just celebrated our 300th anniversary last year. And the streets in the French Quarter were laid out in 1721 for the horse and buggy. That's why the streets are so narrow. Have y'all been to the French Quarter yet? Mm -hmm. Are y'all just around? How long have y'all been here? We just went here yesterday. Yesterday, y'all went to the quarter last night. It was wild, huh? That's what they said, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Saturday night in the French Quarter is like Mardi Gras. I mean, it's warm, warm people. Especially after the parade yesterday. A lot of people came down to the French Quarter to kind of finish off the night. But here in New Orleans, there's no adult curfew. People are allowed to stay out all night long. That is which, not true for you. <laughs> which a lot of people do. But anytime you're in the French Quarter and you cross over Canal Street, the street names change. For instance, Bourbon Street becomes Carondelet Street. Royal Street becomes St. Charles Avenue and so forth, all along Canal Street. But Bourbon Street here in the French Quarter, a lot of people think it got its name because of the Bourbon Whiskey. But Bourbon Street was named for the Bourbon Kings of France. The reason most of the entertainment is on Bourbon Street is because the French Quarter is seven blocks wide and Bourbon Street is a street right down the center. Do y'all need some air conditioning back there? I'm if it gets, it's if it gets too warm, it's fine right now. Uh, too cool later on, let me know and I'll adjust it. Now it's supposed to get up to about 62 degrees today. They were expecting some rain to come in, but hopefully the rain's over with. It rained quite a bit last night. So hopefully the rain's over with today. It's supposed to get really uh, warm as the week goes by. Y'all gonna be a few more days? Out till next Saturday. Oh wow, because around Tuesday and Wednesday, it's gonna get up into the 70s again with no rain in the forecast. So you're probably in for a really good week. It's probably cold back in, in Maryland right now. You know, uh, it, it gets cold here, but it doesn't stay cold very long. But what, what makes it seem so cold here is the humidity. We have a year round average relative humidity of 87%. So like in the summertime here, both the temperature and the humidity are in the high 90s. It feels a lot higher than what it really is. Now this is Bourbon Street over to your left. That's the French Quarter. The French Quarter is the oldest part of the city. It's also the highest point because most of New Orleans is below sea level. But the French Quarter is about five and a half feet above sea level. That was the original city and everything kind of grew up from there. But a lot of people think the French Quarter is all entertainment. But there's about 3,500 people that live in the French Quarter. Now the French Quarter was one of the few areas that never flooded 
during Katrina, because like I said, it's the highest point in the city. But in some of those neighborhoods that we drive through today, there was eight to 10 feet of water. And about 80% of the city was underwater for about two or three weeks. But when all the water came in, we couldn't get it out. We had to pump it out. It took about two or three weeks. So some of those neighborhoods sat underwater for quite some time. But we're gonna see a lot of that a little bit later on. First, I wanna show you the downtown area here in Port of the French Quarter. Now, I wanna point out some of the buildings in this immediate area. Like straight ahead, there's a tall building with a round top. That was our World Trade Center. It's 33 stories, but it was destroyed in Hurricane Katrina. They had a big hole in the roof where the water poured off of the roof. And it's set there, it's been sitting there since Katrina. They took everything out of it. And back in June, they decided to redo the building. They're now redoing the inside. It's gonna be a Four Seasons Hotel. And at the top, there's a revolving cocktail lounge that makes a complete revolution every 90 minutes. All that's gonna be rebuilt. And then notice the gray building here on the left. That's the U.S. Customs House building. Now, when they built the Customs House in the 1850s, they were not sure what side of the building would be the main entrance. So they made all four facades exactly alike. The main entrance now is on Canal Street. Now, I failed to mention, anytime doing the tour, anybody has any questions about anything, just feel free to ask. If there's anything at all that you want to hear about or see in particular, just let me know. Now here on the left- thing, actually. Is there any way you could, I don't know if we'll drive by it, um, to show them the Hurricane Katrina Memorial? We can stop there, oh yeah. Thank you. Sure. Now notice the big shopping area to the left. That's called Canal Place. It's a big shopping mall. It was built in the late 1970s. It features Brooks Brothers, Saks Fifth Avenue, Gucci, and many other department stores. And there's also a movie theater inside the complex. And if you keep looking to your left, you see a group of green glass buildings. Yeah. That's all for what's called the Aquarium. It's called the Aquarium of the Americas. It opened in 1990. It's in the same building as the IMAX Theater. And over at the IMAX Theater, they have a special on Hurricane Katrina. It's a 50 minute documentary. It's called Hurricane on the Bayou. It shows at 12, two and four daily. And straight up ahead, slightly to the left, that's the Canal Street Ferry. You can take a ferry ride across the Mississippi River, and I think it costs $2. It only takes on pedestrians, no cars. But the ferry leaves about every half hour to go across the river and back. And on the other side of the river from here is a residential area called Algiers, which is part of the New Orleans city proper. And then on the right, we have our Harris Casino. That's the only casino in downtown New Orleans. A lot of people ask me about that. It's been here for about 25 years now. But here in New Orleans, gambling is against the law. But we don't call it gambling, we call it gaming. <laughs> we can't go gambling here, it's against the law. We can only go gaming. That's Louisiana politics at its finest. <laughs> Harris pays the state of Louisiana 50 million a year to stay open. So they want any other casinos in here. That's their rent. Now coming up ahead of us, all along the riverfront for the next half mile or so, that's where we had the 1984 World's Fair. We had two World's Fairs in New Orleans. We had one in 1884, and we had one in 1984. And the area up ahead of us, where the 1984 World's Fair was, is called the Warehouse District. Before the 1984 World's Fair, that was nothing but old rundown warehouses along the riverfront. And before the fair opened, they turned a lot of those warehouses into hotels, condominium complexes, and timeshares. But they still call it the Warehouse District. And about two blocks up along the river is our convention center. It's a huge convention center. It was built for the 1984 World's Fair, but after the fair closed, they added on to it a couple of times. It's now the third largest convention center in the United States, third to Minneapolis and Chicago. Do y'all have any uh, fun plans this week? Y'all can have some free time. They are yeah. going to have some free time. They'll have the rest of the afternoon today. Oh, um, good. And we're going to take a uh, dinner cruise on the Steamboat Natchez oh, on yeah. Friday. Yeah, that's a, it consists of a seafood buffet and a, there's a Dixieland jazz band that plays on the Natchez. They're called the Dukes of Dixieland. Now, we're going to turn here onto Poetry Street. Now, 
Now, Porridge Street is also very wide. And a lot of people think, you know, you get Porridge Street and Canal Street mixed up because they run parallel. But Porridge Street was named after our city's first successful banker. His name was Julian Porges. And when Mr. Porges died, he left a dowry to the ladies in Louisiana. And at the age of 18, a young lady could go up to the state capitol and collect her dowry. Today it's worth a dollar twenty-two cents. <laughs> it's still available here in the state of Louisiana. Now we're going to turn here onto Peter Street, and we'll be crossing over the Canal Street, and we'll be entering the French Quarter. And as I mentioned, the French Quarter is the oldest part of the city, but today they call the French Quarter the Vaux Carré. You might have saw those words. That means old square in French, but it's actually an old rectangle. It's seven by fourteen blocks. And as we cross over Canal Street, we'll be entering the French Quarter. But notice again how wide Canal Street is. Now, uh, I want to tell you just a little bit of the history of the way the city got started. Because there's a lot of history down here in South Louisiana. And as I mentioned, we're now 300 years old. But the city was founded by the French in 1718. And then in 1762, King Louis, the 14th of France, gave this area, known as the French Quarter today, he gave it to King Charles III of Spain in a secret treaty. So then the Spanish came in and they settled with the French in the French Quarter. But then in 1803, Napoleon Bonaparte, who was ruler of France at the time, he took this area back from Spain. He said since they paid nothing for it, he wanted it back. He held on to it for 20 days and then turned around and sold it along with all of the Louisiana territory to Thomas Jefferson and the United States. That was the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. So we're French, and then we're Spanish, and then we're French again for a short while, and then sold to the United States. But notice how all the French quarter buildings are joined together. They joined together with cypress logs. In the early days, when they first started building these buildings, they were afraid to go higher than the first floor. So whenever they built above the first floor, they would tie the buildings into one another. And it's a good thing they did. Look at the bottom row of buildings on which he left. Mm -hmm. See how the posts are leaning toward the right? Oh my, yeah. Those, that building's wow. tied into the other one. Otherwise, it had been on the ground a long time ago. Now we're riding parallel with the Mississippi River. It's over to the right. And in just a few minutes, we're gonna drive up and see the Mississippi. It sounds funny when we say we have to drive up to see water, <laughs> but that's exactly what we do here. The Mississippi River is always higher than the city. And right now, the Mississippi River is 17 feet higher than New Orleans. And I'm gonna show you that when we get on the riverfront. <coughs> Excuse me. Now coming up on the left, when we get past those trees, there's a statue of a Frenchman with an Indian and a priest by its side. It's coming up on the left. The Frenchman in the middle is Bienville. He was the man who founded New Orleans for the French. His name was Jean-Baptiste Lemoyne, and his title was Sir de Bienville, here on the left. He came here with his brother, Iberville, and the first two streets of the French Quarter, off of Canal Street, are named for the two French brothers, Iberville and Bienville. And when they founded New Orleans, Bienville was 18 years old, and Iberville was 21. Now when we get past the Jack's Brewery coming up on the right, we're gonna drive up and see the Mississippi. This, this used to be a brewery at one time, where they used to brew Jack's beer. It was spelled J-A-X. But the brewery closed down in 1973. They sold out to Pearl Beer in Texas. But when the brewery closed, they renovated the building. They turned it into shops and eating places, but they still call it the Jackson Brewery. At one time, we had as many as seven breweries in New Orleans. But the last beer that was brewed here commercially was Dixie Beer. But the Dixie Brewery Company was destroyed in Hurricane Katrina. We have a local beer here. It's called Abita Beer, A-B-I-T-A. -A. It's brewed in Abita Springs, which is right outside of New Orleans. Then in the next block and on the left, we have Jackson Square, which is actually the heart of the French Quarter. But we're gonna drop up and see the river then we're gonna come back through this area and pass in front of Jackson Square. Now the Mississippi River starts at Lake Itasca, Minnesota, and it ends up in the Gulf of Mexico. 
is the third longest river in the world, third to the Amazon and the Nile. The total length of the Mississippi River from start to end is approximately 2,350 miles. The Nile River is 4,200 miles and the Amazon is 4,000 and the Mississippi 2,350. And the fourth longest river is the Yukon, which is right at 2,000 miles. And there's a little red streak while that runs up in the, down the riverfront. You see it up ahead there? It just runs along the riverfront for about a mile and a half, and then goes back on to Canal Street. But I want you to notice the, the, the water level. See the river straight ahead? Mm -hmm. See how high it is? Yes. Now, we're going to make a right turn here. Notice the water level. And then look over to your right. Look how far down it goes. Mm -hmm. Look over your right shoulder. Look okay, at that. Wow way below the water level of the river. But uh, it's right now it's 17 feet high in the city, but its flood stage is 19. But we have a backup system. About 30 miles upriver from New Orleans, we have what's called a spillway. That's a series of floodgates located along the river. And when the river water gets too high in New Orleans, they'll open up some of those floodgates. And that will send the river water right through the swamps, mm. taking the pressure off the levees at New Orleans. They just opened up the spillway about 10 days ago. So the water has gone down a little bit. And there's a steamboat Natchez here on the left. The Natchez does two hour cruises up and down the river. It sails from 11.30 to 1.30. It sails again from 2.30 to 4.30. And at nighttime, they have a dinner cruise from seven until nine. And here's the starting and ending point for the Gray Line tours. And if you look off to the left, there's a pair of bridges crossing the Mississippi River. There's two of them side by side. Those bridges are called the Crescent City Connection because the Mississippi River here at New Orleans is in the shape of a moon crescent. And one of our nicknames has always been the Crescent City. Now look off to the right, you see our flood walls and flood gates. We have the flood walls and levees all around the city because of the hurricanes. Now the hurricane season here in New Orleans, uh, South Louisiana, is the same as it is in Florida. It's six months long. It starts June 1st and runs to November 30th. But the two bad months are August and September. Every bad hurricane that's ever come through here has always been in either August or September. That's when the water temperature in the Gulf of Mexico is at its warmest. The warmer the water in the Gulf of Mexico, the more chance of a hurricane intensifying. So by the time October rolls around, the water starts cooling down a bit. But it was 40 years since our last bad hurricane before Katrina. That was in September of 1965. It was called Hurricane Betsy. And for the last 40 years after Betsy, all they talked about around here was what was gonna happen when the big one hit. And when the big one hit, no one was prepared. We did have a three day evacuation, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the hurricane hit early Monday morning. And about three quarters of the population evacuated for Hurricane Katrina. But it was that one fourth that stayed back. Those were the ones that got caught up in the floodwaters. And a lot of those people wound up on their rooftops and on overpasses around the city, waiting to be rescued by helicopters and boats. You might have saw some of that. Y'all were really little small kids when the Katrina hit, yeah. 